There's a way of looking on telly, generally speaking. You know, we talk about stereotypes. There's a way women look on telly and they look, they've got a certain colour hair and they've got a certain physique and they look a certain way. They fit a certain mould, mostly. And um, on news, it's even narrower. Like it's, your hair's straight and it's shoulder length and your makeup is a certain way and you dress a certain way and that's, that's a woman on news. <clears throat> so for me, it was emancipation. It was like freedom. I am going to do what I want with how I look. And even though it sounds really little, it was a really big move. I was actually on um, the AM show on TV3 this week and Paula Bennett was there. And we were, we were yarning about whether she'd go for, you know, being a mayor of a city in New Zealand. Don't know which city, but anyway. She said, uh, I put more thought into going grey, letting my hair colour come through, than I did into having stomach surgery. Wow. So, it's a big deal. Yeah, mm. it is. Because I don't know if you have expectations around how men will look and behave that you've come across in your podcast. <laughs> 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 but there are, the, the, it, it cuts both ways, you know. And until recently, grey was not an option. Silver was a no-go. Wow. For women? Yeah. 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 Men, no problem. <clears throat> oh, yeah. grey-haired, silver-haired male newsreader, awesome. Silver he's got fox. more mana. He's, yeah. he's the man. He always got wisdom. Yeah. Silver fox. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, what, what are your thoughts on that picture? Because you, you're right. I think uh, in terms of the natural look, and if ladies you know, just leave their hair, they just to grow grey, and there's obviously you want to dye your hair, but yeah, for us as men, you know, when our hair grow, uh, grows grey, it's kind of like, yeah, we kind of like get the, oh man, you look cool, you, you're the silver fox. Salt and pepper. Yeah, and so. Uh, George well, Clooney. Yeah. You know, mm. so many people, yeah. No, and I think for me it's about, um, it's a freedom of choice that you can, mm. is, I've got no problem with people dyeing their hair. How much fun is that? You can change the colour of your hair, cool. <laughs> but do we have a choice? Do we have a choice to show up as ourselves and to be honest, I am a silver-haired person now. <laughs> and d there are days when it's like, oh, whoa, who's that old lady with the reflection? And other days when I'm, mostly, when I'm like, yeah, this is me. How easy is this? This is me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But as far as the podcast went, we just started to tackle taboo subjects, probably. I'm I'm an oversharer, so I tell people too much. <laughs> and, um, and so we've talked about all sorts of things, about pelvic floor health, about sex when you're older like i called that episode old people doing it but you know <laughs> if you're if you're with you're with the same <clears throat> man for a long time you're like okay you know like what's w w where are you mm. at like what are you putting what energy are you putting into that relationship what energy are you putting into nurturing or embracing who you are each as a mm. physical sexual being like how can we be positive about that when there's so much kind of confusion and negativity. Like I think there's so much random stuff we have to try and slough off, rub off about sex even. Like it's a taboo, let's not talk about it. I, I think we need to talk more yeah. about bodies and about like, you know, oh, everything. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. I like that you're talking about the sex part. You know, um, mm. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple on the table. Oh, hello. I think, yeah, hello. I'm so surprised Guys, I came. Talk about your sex life. Just straight um, in there. Just I'm straight so in glad there. the two of you have come here today. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me. <laughs> I'm just thinking How's about your it. erectile <laughs> At this but, age, <laughs> but it is, it is, it's interesting. It is interesting because uh, you know, for for us as men, like what, in terms of our, our, our wine as our ladies, and, you know, as we get older, what what would you like for us to, to know or to understand in terms of you know, in terms of sexuality, um, in terms of when you know the, the, the different stages of life? Is there anything in particular, or even you, Caroline? And you know, is this is this something that that we that you think that we should know as men? Maybe not should know, but could know. <laughs> <laughs> Something you could know is that your woman is not broken, that she doesn't need to be fixed in the same way that you aren't broken, mm. needing to be fixed. So I wonder if um, when we're allowed to come home to who we are as men, as women, as people who have, you know, with all of our life experiences, with the, with the good and with the pain, with the hurt – with all of the experiences, I think if we can come to this place where we like say yes to who we are, the, the failings and the <laughs> great bits, then somehow that gives us the space 
the acceptance sort of, I feel like it echoes out, like it ripples out to being able to accept somebody else. And even today, I, I just feel like I'm on a forever journey of learning. I don't think I'm ever going to get to the end of learning. I'm excited about that because it means I'm alive. See those people, they're leaving the country. What are they thinking? You know, they're, they're leaving. What are they learning? They should be listening to Mandate and said. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so I think the discussion that we're kind of having now is, is that perimenopause, which is a 10 years, 7 to 12 years of transition, where a woman goes from being uh, in this nurturing, breeding zone to a non-breeding zone, mm. which is menopause. So once you don't have a period for a year, you're in menopause, right? So it's the only human system, the only biological system that actually finishes, that says sayonara, goodbye, talofa, it's over, we're done. And then the, the question was, oh, maybe women were supposed to die at the end, you know, maybe they're just living too long. But what they've done is they've studied cultures and they've found that women's most productive, most almost I would call it powerful years, uh, in the years post-reproductivity. Mm. So that, that in, agri- in agrarian like cultures, um, more, more primitive cultures that are closer, living closer to the earth, that this woman who is in her menopause, or in Asia they call it your second spring, she provides for the community and the, f- the families in the society and in the social gatherings in a way that is quite profound Mm. that she has a different kind of energy because as a mum your energy is a lot on the family it's a lot on you know uh yeah nurturing other people and meeting other people's needs and so for a man like you might be dealing with a woman who's not sure what's going on and who's struggling with some things like confusion or hot flushes or um aches and pains that she hasn't had before or a loss of desire sexually or all sorts of things, right? On the other side of that, on the other side of perimenopause is a woman who knows who she is and has so much to give and who I think potentially has more energy for what could be good, healthy relationship. So, yeah, I, I'm, I think that... I think that if men can walk beside women and not see them as broken and needing to be fixed, but see them as, um, yeah, collaborating, collaborating together. And how, when a woman doesn't make sense to herself, mm. if the man is like, you know, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> rather than, uh, yeah, I can see this is tough, this is hard. I'm, I'm here, I'm here for it. I'm here for the confusion. I'm here together. We, we'll we'll figure this out, you know. I'm here for the I'm here for the right. I'm not here for the long haul, and knowing him, knowing in a way that that this is a season and that she's going to get through it and be more beautiful, more powerful um, on the other side. Mandate.